Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here. Once again, welcome to the channel. I've recently been covering mainly one tournament. If you're a chess engine enthusiast, one tournament that is truly unrivaled is the top chess engine championship of season 20. The high specs used, the games are much faster, but are they necessarily better? If you looked at the mess of round 62 in the super final, you don't need to hear anything else. If anyone would believe in any conspiracy, this game would be it. Not this one today, but I'm talking about the game of round 62. It was all about that queen move by Stockfish to the edge of the board. No engine in the world would falter like this, particularly not Stockfish, not in a million years. If you miss the game of round 62, the link should appear in 2, 1, and here it comes. When you come to this point where Stockfish gets the queen to find the very edge, the engine also locked a checkmate against it. A mate in 30 moves actually was locked in, and the rest was straightforward. I wonder if your or my software will be able to spot this checkmate. For some engines, a checkmate in 30 moves should be no problem, but this will probably be very much depending on the engine being used and of course the software. I've covered many engine games, I've covered many engine blunders, but this move by Stockfish to A8 I will never be able to explain in a million years. Stockfish was long time all right, but any time over the minute mark should be more than sufficient for engines to come up with something decent, let alone Stockfish. And because curiosity kills a cat, I've uploaded this position, which we can't see right now, just to test what shows up from this end. And this is what I get. I got no mates, on depth 20, nothing on depths 21, 23, 25, 27, or even depth 30. I let the engine think far longer, and after level 35, or let's say depth 35, at 414 km per second, amazing 20 finally appears. A few seconds later, or a few moments later, a faster mate of 18 moves was detected. It wasn't a bishop check on f5, but it was queen takes b6. Let the engine think slightly deeper, and this mate reduces to 15 moves with bishop f5. Leave this position alone before bishop f5, and the engine is finally able to detect that mate in 13 moves. So the game of round 62, I guess, will remain a total mystery to many of us. After that round, we have had another one, two, three more wins, and this is up to round 76. What I therefore want to look at is the super final game of round 77. It's short of 100 moves, but do I care? There are some very valuable lessons to learn, so why not? Stockfish, this side, starts from this position, and there is a 10 move book in progress. Can anyone make out what we are looking at? With two pawns missing from the D and C files, does this look like the position that Esipenko had against Carlsen in Tata? Let's come back to see where these moves come from. e4, we have the Sicilian, knight f3, d6, d4, takes, takes, knight f6, knight c3, a6, bishop e3, e6, and now f3. As if Penko in this game, or in his game against Magnus, went for bishop e2, and the game took an entirely different direction. Knight c6, queen d2, bishop b7, and castles. 
Let's sue Leela Torso Castle. And with this blast, a 97, how different is this game to that between Andre and Magnus? The engines here are on their own. Stockfish introduced this thrust. These two knights came off. And via this type of, let's say, attack, this is how Stockfish responds. It stops the axis to F6 unless you want to provoke this position going for F6. Lila chose something else. She got him in this very typical Sicilian response. And just about a minute later, Stockfish advances this guy also to the fifth. It's a typical engine move, and engines are very happy to show us the way forward. Lila was calculating something else. I don't need to remind anyone, these are the types of games where all the fun really starts. Do you expect it all when castles takes place on opposite sides? Do both engines attack? Do they both defend? Or is there a type of mix in the making? It's all about to be revealed soon. Lila attacked the knight. The knight escaped to the rim. This knight came under direct fire. And with stockfish covering in this way, there appears to be a problem. It's not on the queen's side, but on the king's side. This pawn on g5 is very juicy. And there is no reason why Lila will not take him down for breakfast. Once Lila went for him, yes, the pawn dropped. So why did Stockfish go for this line of play to drop a full pawn? When the bishop stepped back, Lila could have used queen e5. But can anyone see... The reason why is not just to cover the bishop. And queen e5 has basically nothing to do with covering this guy on d6. If you blink, you won't mess it all. Grab hold of this bishop. And once you discover this attack on a1, this is not just a check, but an instant mate. And let's hear it before we do anything else. Checkmate. Coming back, Queen E5 looks more or less like a human trick. Lila did not get the Queen involved, but chose to introduce this guy. When Stockfish attacked the Bishop, Lila returned him to E7. And now, not only the Bishop escapes, but this pawn on D6 is also covered. Lila is a pawn up, and the position is solid strong. You had the expression, more... It's not necessarily more. Having more pieces or pawns on the board can mean actually zilch. Stockfish is going to use everything in his power to prove this point. He got the rook to shift left. Leela gets Her Majesty the King to immediately find the corner. And via this response, can anyone work out what this move does? If not, guys... Worry not, we shall see very shortly. Rook b8 led to the elimination of this pawn. The, oh, this bishop finally gets his way to position here. And if you're looking at a rather awkward continuation, it had to be this move initiated by Stockfish. This is what the engine did. At first sight, it appears like a semi-blunder, but the blunder will occur if you grab hold of this guy, only because you will drop the queen and the game at this stage. So what happened after a3? Lila is trying to find a way to get her pieces to become more active. She came in with this challenge. Stockish found the opportunity to introduce this special into the game, and with Leela removing this guy, if you capture, you may need to worry when this knight finds his way here. If the knight comes off to the bishop, how do you stop the mates on a1? The only move is queen d5. There are a few ways to play this one. Do you get rid of the queens? Or... Do you sneak in with this check? 
Let's come back to where we left things, where this pawn on f4 was arrested. Stockfish challenged the bishop in this way. And rather than engage, this is how Lila answers. Rook f1 got the bishop into block the taking. And what continues next has to be what many people would characterize as the move of the day. Before we show, this will be your chance to step in. So let's kick this one off using our two seconds countdown. And if you need more time, <laughs> you never know what to do. Keep that button paused. So provide everyone is ready to participate. Here we go in two, one, and pause. Has anyone spotted this attack on the queen? It's a beautiful one, but this is not the move we're looking at. If queen e6, what does bishop c4 actually do? If you don't look out, you can do plenty of damage. Dare you grab hold of this pawn and it will be game over. Come in with this takes check and this is how easy you could drop the big lady. Okay, for those who spotted bishop d3, if you were one of those who chose it, pick up this bishop, put him back, and try something far more challenging. Has anyone tried bishop takes check? If you went for it, this would be a huge blunder. And with blunders, this is what you normally get to hear. Coming back, one heck of an initiative is staring you right in the face. Has anyone spotted this exchange sack here on G5? This is exactly how Stockfish played it. This is why engines are way too strong for nearly 99.5% of all humans. Having said this, provided we accept this initiative, can we take anything away with us today? And can we learn something here? Okay, first things first. Can we capture this rook and if so, how? If you use the queen, once you come in with this attack, where is the queen to go? Grab this guy. Blast this guy off the board with a check. Get the king to escape here. And it's not a bishop check because of f5. But even this does nothing. Take, take, and take here. And things look simple or simpler. So coming back to this position. No bishop c4, but just eliminate this guy. If you try and save the rook... At the same time, attack this bishop. This will be a great chance to capitalize. Now you can come in with this check. F5 does zilch. Can you finish things off in just two moves? Can we? Queen takes check, queen takes, and bishop takes, and this is what we're talking about, and why not? Let's hear it once again. I think this is a checkmate. Eh? Coming back, everything starts from this exchange sack, and especially how this rook is removed. We let to avoid what we saw. Grab the rook with the pawn, and via this rook repositioning, what has stockfish cooking? F6 led to the rook to occupy the 7th. But what is the clue? Lila is not an engine that sits back to wait for the party to start. She's in a way able to dance very well to any tune. Given she calculated what rook e7 does or doesn't do, she went for it. She pushed on 
with this guy. Stockfish did exactly the same thing, and much is going to happen here. The pawn came off, the king mounted the second, and can we see why? It protects this guy on the rim. After king b2, Lila pushed on. This guy was eliminated. And with Lila getting the knight to jump here, which is looking to achieve, is to have this bishop eliminated. Bishop d5 led to bishop d7. The knight came in with this attack, and with another 66 moves waiting to be played, we may need to move quicker. Bishop c6 wanting the bishop off. Would not work for Stockfish. If you take, before you arrest this bishop, take with a check, get rid of the pawn, and once you get rid of this bishop, Stockfish's position backfires. Rook c7, Rook c8, and Stockfish is in trouble. Coming back, when the bishop was challenged, Stockfish turned the bishop against the queen, and we're little trying to get the queens to come off. This is how Stockfish answers. Queen to the third led to this queen response. When this guy came off with a check, Stockfish refuses to get rid of him. But this is how the engine plays it. Rook eight led to the attack on the bishop. Lila brings in the queen to cover, and with Stockfish discovering this type of response, the engine was taking zero risks when it came to king safety. I would love to go through this variation, but I will skip to save time. Queen f3 lets Stockfish to go for something you don't get to see often. The engine exposed the queens, and when the big ladies departed, what on earth is going on? We have five lila pawns v one, two, three are stockfishes, and stockfish is down by the exchange. Sit on this position because there is a reason why stockfish did what he did. Think of bishop takes knight on e5, and then stockfish is free to eliminate the bishop on c6. But with Lila to move, she evacuated this outpost on c6. Stockfish 2 empties this outpost on e6. And with Lila now chasing after this passer, can you see a relatively easy continuation? Guys, it was his attack on the rook. When this bishop was eliminated, Stockfish got rid of this guy with a check. And against any move, this rook on d8 is next. King West got Stockfish to squeeze in this check, and with the king moving west again, it wasn't Bishop takes Rook, because this would now be a disaster. When Stockfish applied this blow, this game is now as good as done. Having said this, we had to cover half of the moves in the entire game. Eli here has to drop one Rook, and in this light, the engine is looking on a way how to minimize damage. She applied this type of attack. The rook came off. Lila also grabbed hold of this rook. And one beautiful move that was not played was this bishop check on f6. It guarantees a promotion to a brand new queen. And yet Stockfish chooses a different path. This is how the engine played it. When this guy came off with a check, a3 also went, and with Lila getting rid of this knight, Stockfish brings up a brand new queen and also saves the bishop on the rim. Rook c6 led to this check. It's not a blunder, but a trap. Under the circumstances, Lila took, Stockfish applied this check, and the rook bit the dust. And from this point on, it's going to be an uphill struggle for one engine in particular. Do you think Stockfish can win? Do you think Lila wins? Or do you think this is another draw? If you're able to answer this question without really tossing a free side coin, okay, let me change that. Let's call it a pyramid. 
You are a much better player than many. Let's speed up things, shall we? To the very end. Bishop e2 led to this check. The king moved forward. This tricky move appeared. Lillabax offered Bishop to safety. And Miss Stockfish grabbing hold of this guy. Has the same game got in any way easier? King f5 led to this pin. The king returned to f6, and with Stockfish now getting his own king involved, if the knight can't pull out any nasty jokes, Stockfish should be fine. Is the engine winning, though? We can basically forget the king side, because the bishop and pawn don't have to move. They're absolutely safe. Knight f4 led to the king to back off, Lila opted for this crazy attack on the queen. The queen applied this check. The king was flushed forward. Stockfish introduces this check. The king backs off. And with the checks continuing. King f5 and now king d4. And this is how Lila answers. A check was initiated. King g3. And after king e5... This is the only way for Stockfish to move forward. With Lila returning the bishop to b5, Stockfish chases after this bishop. Did I say bishop? Stockfish chases after this pawn. Lila covers in this way. King f5 got Lila in with this move. This bishop came under fire. And with the king coming to his rescue, Stockfish enforces this check. So what we saw here is a king moving east. With the queen move to e3, Lila returns the bishop to e5. So far this bishop is tied to the pawn, Lila has nothing to worry on the queen side. As Stockfish moves on from this point on, it's also quite interesting. The engine came in with this answer. Lila grabs a chance to check the king. The king moves to the rim. And here comes the bishop back to b5. In with the check, got the king to shift west. The... what happened here? This check was enforced. With the king moving here, Stockfish gets the queen in with this check. With the majesty the king forced, in a way, here, in the wake of this response, this is a classic case where one engine has no longer any viable moves. Everything loses here, and if only Leela would skip a turn. The best she found was this check. The king moves forwards. Leela returns the bishop to b5, and in a way, Leela's challenging stock we should come up with something more forceful. There is a way to do this, but it requires some rearranging. Here we go. King g6 led to a check. King f5 led to another check. King f6 got the bishop back to b5. And with Stockfish getting his king to move southwest, Lila now mounts the attack on the queen. In with a check, got the king to find the very corner. Stockfish closes in with the king. Lila gets the bishop to find this outpost, and with Stockfish conjuring up this queen move, Lila gets to push this pawn. King e3 led to this bishop move, but how well can Lila hold? Everything, or nearly everything, is tied up. Queen e1 locking in the knights. Got the king to jump to the second. A check followed. The king returns. And if Leela can't win, she's looking for that magical stalemate. B4. Got the knight to find the third. Stockfish introduces this queen move. The knight returns or comes back to the first. And now Stockfish is going to use a different tactic. Everything Jenjin tries falls short to one move. Queen d6, that's a time of repeat. This pawn came off, and now we can see 
what is at the end of the tunnel and how much light there is to see. King H2 led to a check. The king moved west. This pawn walked and with Lila getting her bishop to find the edge of the board. After queen a6 and bishop here, Stockfish advances this guy to the sixth. So in short, if you pick up your magnifying glass, you will notice this pawn will come off to the bishop. G3 led to this guy to find the seventh. And rather than grab the pawn, this is how Lila plays it. It's a blank. Stockfish brings up a brand new queen. Lila delivers his check, but this had to be Lila's very last check in this game. With Stockfish ejecting the king to this outpost, no more checks are possible. Knight f2 got the bishop to come off, and the game ended here with Stockfish being short of a checkmate in three or four moves. Let's fill in the gap, shall we? King h3, queen a3, king back to the second, right after this takes check on g3, after king f1, this check, and king e2, this is how you reach a checkmate, and let's hear it for the last time in this game. Okay, checkmate. Every game in this super final is paramount because every single point counts. At this point in time, the score is very close and everything is still being played for. The super final has it all. Queens coming off in the openings, rooks disappearing on move seven, multiple queens being introduced, and the list of sacrifices is a mile long. Despite the many drawn games, what we saw and what we are seeing is these games are by no means boring. Don't get me wrong, some positions have been at some stage very boring, but this is not something to be avoided. Engines like Stockfish and Leela will do anything they see fit to get their full point in the end. In this game, Stockfish ended up with the queen that was up against a knight and a bishop. If no pawns were present, it would have been a draw. Stockfish went for the kill by trying to trap the king in the corner. But even this tactic didn't work. It eventually found a different way, and the rest is history. So one more beautiful game out the way, and things didn't happen with that exchange sacrifice on g5, but it was already part of the mix. Let's call it an eclectic mix. More to follow at the cost of covering other stuff, but no regrets. So this is how I like to close. More to come as usual, so you know the drill. Your chess puzzler here, and whatever you do, safety always first. Mm -hmm.